Uh, I'm a blues singer. So I've been singing the blues in the last 15 years of my life. I've been traveling across uh, Europe, but I've been in China and also South Africa. Uh, but when this Corona time came, you know, there was no concerts, nothing, uh, nothing to do. And, and the climate emergency was already uh, in my mind, uh, how, what, can be the solution or how can I contribute uh, to solving this? Uh, and before I started to um, uh, do the blues, I, I studied economics and social psychology and philosophy and this kind of stuff. So uh, I was pretty interested in, um, in taking up on that and how uh, we, can we use science uh, to, to solve our problems? Because, you know, uh, what I see that we have all the solutions that we, uh, so we have the technology, we have the knowledge, uh, we can solve uh, everything. And, and I'm trying to, so with the Green Revolution, I put together um, a solution matrix or a solution design. Um, and the goal here is, um, what the scientists are saying that we have to be mobilizing our societies, transforming how we live, how we work, how we travel, how we eat, uh, every aspect of our lives, right? Because we have an impact, uh, a huge impact on the planet, and we have to be uh, aware that impact first, and then make great decisions so that's that's what we have to do and mobilizing uh, societies is the best way to do it through arts through music through um uh, to uh, through the activists who are already already been working hard uh, everywhere on the planet so i created uh, this idea with the green revolution coffee shops what uh, what if uh, if we uh, open a coffee shop here in Amsterdam or create a coffee shop franchise, whenever you go buy a legally recreational cannabis, uh, uh, then the profits created by that, that purchase are going to fund the artist and the activist uh, uh, because we, we, need, we need to create that public awareness. We need to be mobilizing. That's, that's, the, that's the most important aspect of the coffee shop. Uh, but, but what are the, the scientists also saying that we have to be capturing CO2 in a very quick manner and, 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 and in a fashion that it's never been uh, done before. Uh, so uh, uh, then, then, it come, then it comes to nature because nature is the best technology that we have. We don't have to be, uh, we, we are inventing lots of amazing technology, but nature is already did that. So uh, uh, hemp, I, we call hemp as a miracle because it's kind of a miracle plant. Uh, but in, in the beginning, uh, when, when we talk about cannabis, uh, cannabis is a, a family uh, of, of different plants. So uh, I used to compare it to dogs. So when you, uh, you have a chihuahua, which, is a, which is, a, is a wonderful dog and you can have a lot of fun with the chihuahua, that's the weed that you smoke. But when you have a Doberman, which is also uh, can be a lots of fun and lots of joy, but also Doberman can do a lot, uh, a, a lot more than a Chihuahua. So Chihuahua is the, uh, the weed that you smoke and industrial mm -hmm. hemp is the plant that can provide lots of uh, things, uh, also food. When it comes to food and food security, um, uh, hemp is an amazing uh, plant to build a whole community around so i'll be happy to be talking about how we can use hemp and what are the different uses uh, that that we can help people with okay so many questions this is fascinating so first of all does the the coffee shop exist now so i could go and make my contribution not yet but, okay. uh, but the good news is that we are we are in contact with multiple uh, places. So we already found, found coffee shops that we can buy. We're just now looking for three million euros to buy it. Okay. So that's the that's the that's the thing that um, uh, the the project is set up. Uh, so we are basically in the fundraising uh, part of this. Great. So that's what's happening with Chantal. So you'll be pitching for to help get the three million. Um, in fundraising that you're looking for at the virtual meeting. Got it. Okay. Now, once it's up and running, um, ha, ha, like where is the hemp that you're going to be investing in and supporting? So first of all, uh, we need a change uh, in the public's perception. 
So how we, how we look at hemp and not just hemp, when it, when it comes to nature, there are lots of solutions like seaweed uh, and other stuff. But, but the first and the most important part is that the green revolution is gonna be promoting the plant itself because uh, the, the multiple uses of uh, the hemp plant when it comes to uh, food security, for example. Um, so what we are focusing on is creating the bare necessities for people. So hemp can clean water, hemp can revitalize land and also provide food. And, and also uh, hemp can build homes and houses. We can bu build even skyscrapers with hemp. We can even make diamonds from hemp. So there is a lots of basically unlimited possibilities. But when it comes to the people who don't uh, have clean drinking water or, or living in, in, uh, um, in, in hunger, uh, hemp is, is an amazing plant because it's versatile. Uh, it, uh, can plant be planted anywhere on the planet because it doesn't treat too much water. It doesn't need pesticides, herbicides. So it's a it's a natural uh, building block uh, of of our uh, of our nature solution. So when we design, how does it help in terms of food production? I understand how it operates as a plant. But I'm I'm less uh, aware of how it um, operates as a food. Yeah, uh, so hemp uh, hemp seeds, a uh, uh, hundred gram of hemp seeds contains uh, uh, five hundred fifty five calories, uh, and also uh, it's rich in proteins and fats and all the amino acids that you need, uh, and also it contains vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin D, and vitamin E. Uh, so basically, hemp is kind of a superfood uh, in a way that that uh, you can live on hemp seeds. Uh, hemp, uh, and, and we can make milk out of it, bread, uh, different kind of oils. So there is a multiple way uh, where we can use uh, hemp. Um, we can make even hemp cheese. So uh, hemp is um, kind of, a, a, of an all-in food, uh, and it can skip. Uh, so when it comes to fishing, you know the overfishing uh, and fish as 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 a food source for a lot of people. Uh, hemp can um, provide the same nutritional value as fish. So uh, we are looking for systemic solutions where where um, you can build a whole community around hemp. Uh, you can you can provide food, but also when it comes to biochar and when it comes to agriculture. So. Uh, um, the regenerative agricultural practices, uh, we can use hemp there. Uh, the first thing that hemp does is enriches the soil. So it puts nutrition and uh, uh, the aerial, uh, it expands the aerial um, uh, in, uh, increase. Uh, so there is more air is in the, in the soil and, and that creates more bacteria than, than it, and it creates more nutrition in the soil. Uh, soil, so it uh, people use it uh, with the regenerative agriculture, but uh, also it can be a rotational uh, crop. So you can rotate it and and enhance the soil for other um, other crops. So it's it's a great way to build a whole community around uh, hemp and also uh, increase food security because that is going to be the most important uh, challenges when it comes to the climate emergency and the uh, and the extreme weather events and people will not have uh, anything to eat so hemp is a, is is the food source that we can look to every, and and plant it everywhere on the planet so i get the feeling that you're an evangelist for hemp the crop and its food yes. security solutions so i understand the evangelist I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by all the um, untapped potential of hemp. That sounds like a great potential growth market for sure. When it comes to the cafe itself, what's the connection? So how do we connect the cafe, your evangelism and the untapped potential of hemp? So, yeah, that's 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 the culture. So how uh, a cafe is a place where you meet people who are already interested in climate action or or just because 
90% uh, of the European Union, uh, there is a, a survey done in 2019, see the climate emergency as a serious problem. And the Pew Research Center just came out uh, with the research that 80% of people living in uh, developed uh, countries are ready to how they, they are open to change how they work and they, how they live uh, when it comes to the climate emergency. So people are ready to change and they are looking for solutions. Mm -hmm. Everybody is looking, how can, how, can how can I contribute? How can, with my purchases, with my decisions, with my choices, how I can be more conscious about, about what I buy and what is the impact that, that I have with that purchase. So when it comes to the coffee shop, it basically, we use um, this, uh, it's in social psychology, it's a social psychological term, it's called the power of self-persuasion. So everybody wants to see themselves in a good light light so whenever you do something good like you buy something and in the in the end of that purchase uh, you're gonna have a positive effect that uh, you want to create that 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 effect and again and again so whenever you buy um, uh, something and you pay with uh, pay with your card you plant a tree or you plant hemp so that's how uh, that's how consumption comes into the uh, uh, to the place, and the cafe shop is going to be the place where people uh, can see how this is happen, how how this is happening. So you can go buy a coffee there and see how much money goes into funding artists or activists, and also at the same time connect with the projects that all these wonderful organizations are doing in Amsterdam, in Netherlands. Whenever you are, you can be connected to local actions. So the the meeting place, the culture, and the, the place of change is going to be the coffee shop. Fantastic. So it starts with one coffee shop in Amsterdam, but you're seeking to expand into a franchise across Europe quite quickly by the sounds of it and create, as you said, a community. Yes, uh, this is this is the goal. Um, um, cannabis now is, is, a, is a booming industry. Uh, it's a booming market. And I think the legalization is, is happening everywhere around the globe. Um, and people are shifting their, their, their perspectives on hemp and mostly the younger generation. So when it comes to climate action, I think uh, uh, I, have, I have an obligation, I have a duty uh, to, to, to spread uh, 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 climate action and awareness. And the best way to do this is to create a franchise because uh, franchises are easy to spread. And we created um, an international uh, foundation franchise model where the, the mother foundations foundation is in Amsterdam and the daughter foundations are in the States, in Canada, uh, in Spain, and hopefully in the UK uh, also with, with CBD because CBD is, is also an important uh, part of uh, when it comes to uh, cannabis and uh, the medicinal uh, um, uh, purposes of cannabis. So yeah, the franchise is gonna be everywhere. That was one of my questions actually, is whether you're interested in a, um, <clears throat> rather than a cafe uh, facing perspective, being interested in, you know, co-branding or getting involved in um, the branding of CBD products, which really are proliferating, certainly here, I'm sure they are everywhere. Yes. Uh, so when it comes to uh, the green revolution and all that money that we, we're going to create, so yes, we're, we're going to have a green revolution, CBD brands, and uh, that that's, I am the blues singer, and the business development is, is also an important part of this. So how are we going to tell people and show people and, and also educate people on, on hemp and the nature how nature, how we create this change of perspectives through consumption, right, is going to be the most important um, steps because uh, eventually the change has to happen in everybody, and uh, that uh, that is going to make the change. Uh, so, the when it comes to CBD and food and health. Uh, hemp is, I think, is, is it's on the in uh, on the top uh, uh, um, race or, or or in the top corner in in uh, uh, battling this uh, this 
problem that we have that our food, how we produce our food is not sustainable in any way as we do it right now. Uh, so that's why we are focusing on, on uh, decentralizing uh, production, which is, which is gonna be an important because uh, when, when we produce everything uh, by one company at the same time, uh, um, we, we will have um, huge problems uh, because the centralization of uh, power is one of the biggest problems that we have when it comes to food or when it comes to oil or when it comes to uh, banking or when it comes to any, any other issue. So you, on that basis, you foresee the franchises being quite in, operating relatively independently across the, the various geographies where you hope to set up? Yes, but also at the same time, uh, the, um, what we want to achieve here is transforming the economic system. So in a way that we, uh, what the Green Revolution does here is a transparent thing. So we are open as an open source business. So we want other businesses to be also transparent what they are doing and how they make uh, their products. Uh, so that is important because the information has to reach to the, cost the customers. Uh, and in the, in the same way that we want to partner up with brands who have an impact, they're not just about making money and money and more money, just the sake of for more money, but the, the, what, what the product they're creating has a tangible impact in society. So that's how we imagine uh, just creating a new way of uh, uh, how we do business. And that's the the, the partnerships that we want to build is built on this principle that whatever you do, you have to have a positive impact on the climate, on society, or, or on people, or animals, or nature, or anything. So once this uh, first coffee shop is up and running, and the money starts coming in, Yes. Do you have do you have pro specific projects in mind? Can you point our readers to, you know, any specific projects that you already are very very keen to begin supporting? Yes, um, um, artists and activists, but most importantly, when it comes to the climate emergency, there are already uh, uh, communities impacted uh, by, by extreme weather events and hunger, like in Haiti and in Madagascar. So the, the most important, I think, the immediate action that we're going to have um, is uh, to support these projects. Uh, we have connections um, in uh, the um, North American indigenous community. And when it comes to hemp and the holistic way, how we look to nature, we are learning from uh, the indigenous communities. And um, we have a great advisor, Alicia Foles, and, and her Many Voices Foundation. And she's coming also to Amsterdam uh, to support Green Revolution and support hemp. Uh, anyway, that that uh, we we looking into funding um, uh, relief efforts uh, in Haiti and also in Madagascar. Uh, that is going to be the, I think, the most important thing that we're going to do and at the beginning. But also at the same time, we we want to fund. Uh, art projects, concerts, festivals, uh, people gathering together uh, uh, to talk about the climate issue and also educate people about the climate emergency. So that's why we created the workshops, climate emergency solutions workshops. Uh, and also uh, we, are want, uh, we want to fund uh, uh, the network of um, uh, because the, the technology that we have, um, how we can transform uh, systems is the, the technology whenever you pay with your card, you plant hemp or you plant a tree. So we want the money to start flowing from the first world, where is money, to the third world where, where people are in uh, immense need and there is already a catastrophe happening uh, uh, lots of places. So that's going to be the immediate uh, thing when we have the money, setting up the infrastructure, funding uh, action projects, uh, creating awareness, and also already uh, uh, focusing on relief. 
Great. So the initial um, focus on relief won't be hemp related. It's more about just getting some funding to people who, who need it. No, it's it's hemp related. So okay. when it when it comes to communities and community building, uh, these are what we are focusing on. So how hemp can create the bare necessities that people can clean their own water, people can make their own food and also build their own homes and shelter. So that is the most important part of this, because if we have the bare necessities to live, uh, then we can uh, uh, basically reduce poverty through, through these steps. So right. the first step is the, the clean water, food and shelter. And that's what we are focusing on. Great. And so <clears throat> clean water, food and shelter via hemp in Madagascar, Haiti, and in some tribal communities in North America. Yes, and the, the thing is that there is a lots of um, need everywhere. There, there is a huge need to, uh, in Africa, in Nigeria, people uh, people um, gonna be, there, there are floods everywhere. So there are no crops, it's, it, hunger is gonna set everywhere in Africa. So people gonna migrate. So these problems, I'm not gonna be solving all these problems. That's why we create, uh, green revolution as a movement so our goal is to uh, raise 100 million euros in the first year because we want to put these funds these money into the areas which are already impacted the people are already suffering around the around the globe so we want to create this network through hemp solutions financing uh, communities how communities can be uh, decentralized and uh, help them, them own selves, so how they can be self-efficient. Uh, and when you talk about communities being decentralized, I guess that's because you want to be able to support them direct rather than having to go through humanitarian agencies and rather than dealing with the fact that many communities have been, you know, absolutely abandoned from a policy perspective by their own governments. So this is about, I suppose, using technology that we have today that enables you to develop direct relationships with, with these communities. Yes, and we are focusing on farmers. So we are focusing on the farmers and the farming communities. So we have connections in India and Nepal and in, and in uh, uh, Africa, South America, and North America also. So the first, uh, first uh, most important part of this, I, I think is we, we want to support research because there is still, still a lots of research has to be done when it comes to hemp. But at the same time, uh, uh, when, we, when we talk to farmers and how we create this awareness, because as, as we talk to people in India and in Nepal, in Togo, Nigeria, Kenya, people very keen to solve their problems. And they are really interested in, in, uh, in hemp and how hemp can help solve their problems so what we, what we figured out is that we create these community events with some music uh with some uh with some and entertainment blues, and some blue singing but uh, yes okay. and, and and funding local artists so that that is the thing that green revolution is coming with the mm -hmm. with the solution package in the same way that that we create a community around him we create events in, involving people that uh enjoying themselves but also educating at the same time creating the local networks uh, around uh, the farmers and uh, we give the knowledge and also um, the the means uh, to make their own hemp and create their own biochar uh, clean their own water build their own homes so how they can use hemp and then from that uh, these sustainable decentralized uh, communities or uh, can spread their own uh, information around and this is basically low tech so whenever uh, you want to create biochar you need a barrel and you just need to burn uh, 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 the hemp uh, it's called the paralysis so without oxygen it burns to uh, biochar which is a natural fertilizer and also biofuels 
which we can just put into any engine. So when it comes to independence from the fossil fuels uh, uh, and decentralized uh, fossil fuel production, hemp is an also a great way to create energy. And through energy, uh, uh, we can create uh, lots of other things. So that is the way how we see hemp can have a huge impact everywhere on the planet because we can grow, grow this everywhere. It's, it's incredible. Just going back uh, to something you mentioned, how on earth does hemp make diamonds? So first, first you have to burn it. That's the biochar or uh, put it into the paralysis machine. That's the biochar. And from the biochar, which is basically carbon, the diamonds are carbon. Like, uh, and then, then there is a method. I am not the scientist, by the way. So uh, there is a method that you can press uh, uh, this carbon into diamonds, uh, and this uh, then then we don't, you know, the, uh, the blood diamonds or how we call this, like it's it's connected to child labor, uh, uh, slavery. Uh, it's it's a horrific uh, thing. Uh, it's still happening today. Uh, so when it comes to this problem, hemp can help this. Uh, also creating diamonds uh, from hemp and we can use this in in construction so uh, yeah infinite possibilities when it comes to lithium or batteries mm -hmm. hemp can we can make hemp batteries so we can stop all the lithium mining uh, which is which is not just environmentally destructive but but it's uh, it's connected to the wars and and the lots of other things uh, hor horrible catastrophes around the globe so bringing it all back to Chantal and the EA project and what you have coming up in just about a week. Um, so how's that, how does all of that work and what, what, should, what should people be doing to get involved? So uh, the EA project, uh, the EA project, Chantal created the EA project. She is an amazing uh, lady, by the way. Uh, I really adore her because she's, she's been working on this uh, almost a year now, uh, finding uh, projects which uh, which are not easy, finding sustainable projects, and also matching them to investors is is uh, is a really important thing. Uh, I think now because when it comes to the climate emergency, now businesses see that sees that in the next ten years, uh, if we don't change radically how we do business, how we create our supply chains. How we how we maintain uh, our consumption and our civilization, we are not going to do be doing any business uh, uh, longer. So now business is finally waking up and looking for sustainable uh, projects. So the EA matchmaking project, what Chantal is doing, is. Uh, it's it's an amazing thing and it's a necessary thing. So I really thank her and I thank you uh, for for uh, for showcasing uh, all that. Great. So you're going along to pitch. You're going to be meeting um, investors who should be interested in supporting your sustainable project. Your initial pitch is for um, three million euros to get off the ground, to get the first cafe off the ground. Uh, what that supports is the um, fundraising of 100 million euros to support um, hemp related projects around the world, which will address climate change issues within the first year. So that seems like a good deal for investors who are really interested in that kind of thing. Great. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, it's, you know, one year ago when I started this, I had this idea uh, of, of, of uh, climate action and the cafe shop and, and how, how we can change things. Um, I never thought that, that uh, uh, one year after I'm going to be sitting here with you and, and looking for one, uh, 3 million and then 100 million euros to do this. But that we, we have an amazing team. So it's not just me doing this. Uh, more than uh, 60, 70 people contributed to the Green Revolution in the last year. Um, we have wonderful people all around. We are connected to the X Prize Hemp Drawdown Team, which is an international team of scientists working on hemp solutions around the globe. We are also supported by the Catalyst 2030, which is uh, an organization uh, 
pushing for the social development goals. We are also supported by a member of the Wellbeing Economic Alliance. We are supported by the Greenlight District Office. Uh, so we have a huge network and uh, lots of great people working on this. It's not just me. Uh, uh, I, I am I'm just the guy, the blue singer who, who had this idea, but there's a lots of people working on this. And I truly appreciate your help and and Chantal's help and I hope we're gonna find that person who says let's open a coffee shop in Amsterdam and and spread hemp around the globe wherever we can. It's fantastic in this country everyone's got their eyes on COP26 which is coming up around about the same time so I imagine you have a very firm view on what it is that uh, people should actually be focusing on when it comes to addressing climate change and, uh, and, and and being interested in what's happening at COP26. And I imagine that the word is hemp. Yes, hemp. And not just hemp. Uh, I'm going to the COP, by the way. So I'm going to be there at the COP conference. Uh, people can find me. Uh, maybe I'm going to be singing in some bars uh, in Glasgow, uh, doing some blues there. Uh, but but uh, what is the message is that uh, we as humanity, uh, we can imagine anything. And we have uh, lots of great uh, people, and not just people, but an, an amazing thing, which is called nature, which is, you cannot beat nature. And, and hemp is nature, seaweed is nature, and the lots of other things. So I just want to open people's ideas and minds, what we can do ourselves, uh, and how we can uh, create um, a, a wave of solutions because we have all the solutions. We just we just have to be open and welcoming uh, uh, in, into this wave of solutions. So that's what I'm going to be doing at COP, uh, spreading some inspiration, hemp, and and some rock and roll. So you'll be singing. <laughs> when where can people go to see you speaking? Do you have um, some some times that we should make a note of? I'll just write them down. Yes, uh, so if, if you are in Amsterdam, uh, uh, please join October 30th uh, uh, in the Bourbon Street, uh, in the center of Amsterdam Bourbon Street Music Club, uh, where I'm gonna be playing. And also this is, um, uh, we organize with the Green Revolution, the Climate Action Music Nights, where you can meet with other climate activists and be engaged into the solution. So that's October 30th. And uh, from October 8th, I'm going to be in Glasgow. Uh, November October 8th? November, sorry, November 8th, uh, I'm going to be in Glasgow. From Great. November 8th till November uh, 13th. Great. And are you speaking while you're there? Uh, there is there is some connections. We are still uh, still uh, figuring it out. I'm I'm basically going there to meet with the lots of people, and uh, I would be happy to speak, uh, but I haven't got any speaking engagements yet. Great, so brilliant. But I think if people miss you singing in a local club, that would be a real shame for them. That's something they should definitely do. If we hear from anyone, we'll put them in touch with you. Thank you very much. Really, Great. I really do. Attila, is there anything I should have asked that I didn't ask you? There is a lot, a lot to talk about, but but I uh, but I think uh, you That's you uh, yes. Uh, one thing I really want to tell um, is that that um, um, if if you're not just uh, into uh, cannabis or weed or it's it's not. Um, we are not not, not about um, um, uh, promoting uh, the, the uses of drugs. We are about how we can transform the economic system. How, how, system. How you can imagine a place whenever you go to an Aldi, a Tesco, a Vodafone, an Albertine, you buy stuff, and in the end of the day, the profits created by your purchase are going to fund education healthcare, fight against poverty, uh, uh, food security, and, and lots of other things. So how we can transform our, our consumption and our economic system in a way that whenever you do something or buy something, you always contribute to a cause. And that is, that is the goal here, because if we can do this, 
then then we can do anything uh, and I, I i truly believe that um uh, when it comes to uh, the climate emergency uh, we cannot solve uh, this problem uh, uh, when when it you know with with greed the only uh, the uh, against the dark there is only light against greed there is only giving so uh, we have to start giving back uh, to people to nature uh, and to life so that's why i'm here all about to uh, to give so thank you great um so what's interesting is that it sounds as though um in terms of you know hemp usage the um you know, getting stoned is actually a very small part of this picture. It's yes. like, if it's legal and that's what you want to do, that's absolutely fine. I can go into your coffee shop and just buy a coffee. I don't have to buy yeah. a drink. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, when it comes to hemp, it's... Uh, uh, people are, are... So there is a lots of things happening. When, when, you, when you think about uh, building a hemp skyscraper, which is possible, by the way, and that hemp skyscraper is going to be capturing CO2 in the next 50 to 100 years. So it's a breathing home, uh, which, uh, which is fire resistant and mold resistant at the same time, and, inv and, and captures a lot of CO2. Uh, when, when you grow the hemp, uh, uh, when it comes to paper, when it comes to de deforestation, you know, 80,000 uh, uh, trees being cut down every single day to make our paper and our furnitures. Uh, uh, hemp can produce uh, four to 10 times uh, as many uh, paper in a 20 year uh, time scale as, as than a tree. So it's the hemp is going to be bigger than the computer because if we don't do this, by the way, if we don't start capturing that uh, that CO2 and we don't, don't start restructuring how we produce stuff and how we create things, then we are not going to be surviving. That's what the scientists are saying. So we are uh, with the green revolution everything what we say and do is based in sciences so when it comes to cognitive sciences or climate science or or just hemp and sustainable sciences and uh, agriculture everything what we do is uh, is a scientific method brilliant it's it's really really inspiring i think it's a great idea to make cop 26 all about hemp it's probably the most sensible uh, suggestion anybody's put forward as far as far as things go. Certainly the most tangible thing I've heard in all the dialogue about this. Far more interesting to talk about than, you know, more climate goals and more climate targets, which we all know aren't going to be met by politicians. So it's very, very interesting. Yes. And when it comes to the politicians, so, so what we say at the Green Revolution that the politicians and the big business are uh, uh, they never going to solve this problem because they cannot. So that's also cognitive science. Um, uh, social behavior studies already prove when you uh, get richer and richer, you're distancing yourself from society and also from your capacity to relate to human emotions. So basically your compassion disappears and also your um, um, you, you cannot relate to humans anymore in that in that same way. So that's the dehumanization process. And, and um, that is a huge obstacle when it comes to finding solutions because it's it's an it's an emotion it, it's an, an emotionally involving thing the climate emergency the destruction that we are doing and how we have to act accordingly. So when, but when it comes to the science says that that the politicians are not they they have a different perspective on society than other people so they're never going to be fully solving this they can help they i would i would want everybody want would want that the politicians and the big businesses are helping and i think there is a lots of people who are already thinking about how they can create something uh, uh, which is which is helping but st still staying in the system so the radical change that that we are proposing here is not so radical it's just transforming how we think about business and what is business for and how we can use business to be a force for good 
because hemp is a great commodity. And when it comes to producing stuff, you need a great commodity. It can create more value, more value through the chain. And that is what hemp can offer. And, and I truly believe that people in business are going to see this. We can, we can make optical, opti, uh, optical cables from it and laptops and computers and cars and airplanes and even spaceships from hemp, which is crazy. But yeah, that's, that's, people are working on this, by the way. Um, and if I need to look that up, I'll find them via your website with the various scientists who you're yes. connected into. Yes. So the thing is, uh, we have a hemp, uh, we have an education platform, Green Revolution Education, which is our YouTube channel. And on the YouTube playlist, you can find related information to uh, either if you're interested in climate, history, philosophy, economics, uh, hemp. So there is a huge set list uh, on our YouTube channel. It's, we call this the power of knowledge. And uh, uh, you, you can check out that I think like six hours now uh, uh, information on in video forms uh, uh, just about hemp and what hemp can do and how you can use hemp and how uh, how it's come to agriculture and food and and cleaning water and and all these different facets of hemp. So uh, I recommend people to check out our playlist, the power of uh, uh, knowledge.